was absolute chaos when we pulled up. People on the fire escapes. We heard a transmission that uh, the staircase had collapsed from the first and second floor. Crossed the hallway to another bedroom, opened the door, and there was a set of infants lying on the floor. As soon as I put weight on the stairs, I fell right through, uh, right up to my chest level. We knew we had to put that fire out. You know, it wasn't, it, there was no other option than to push our way up those stairs. Brooklyn, 1075 the box, 2637. 1075 box, 2637, 1075, 2637, 510 61st Street. We pulled up that night and uh, fire was blowing out from the fr uh, front door and a half landing uh, all the way up through the bulkhead. Uh, you know, when I pulled up, I, I could cover exposure one and exposure two. Uh, we had everything covered right off the bat. As soon as we hopped off the rig, you can see numerous people on the fire escapes coming out of the windows. They were just everywhere. People on the fire escapes. Uh, my roof man told me actually that people were jumping off uh, the second floor, jump uh, onto an awning, you know, just to get out. I was the uh, officer of Engine 201 that night, and uh, we pulled up. There was heavy fire from the front door up through the bulkhead, through the windows of the, uh, the stairway. It was evident that we had a lot of work ahead of us. I uh, grabbed an inch and three quarter, um, jumped off, waited for my backup man. He grabbed his folds. Um, we went to the front and we were met with fire right in the front uh, of the building. We made our way up, first floor, second floor, um, got to the third floor. And uh, I put, as soon as I put weight on the stairs, I fell right through, uh, right up to my chest level, holding on. Mayday, mayday, we're going to come out to the stairway from the second to the third floor. A couple of guys pulled him out. They, uh, they threw a ladder up at that point over the stairs. There was still fire going up uh, fourth floor. I had a job to do. Uh, we all had a job to do that night. And just trying to finish what we started. There was a lot of people at, at stake. To all members on the third floor, don't use the interior stairs. There's no stairs for 33. Firefighter Hogan was my uh, irons uh, man that night and I uh, told him to go up uh, the fire escape to help out with the life hazard because uh, there was no use him being with uh, the can and I and the engine. Uh, it was better use for him to go up the fire escape. So I went up the fire escape to the left side of the front door, went up to the second floor, popped the window, went in. Uh, as soon as I went in, there was a woman and a small boy right there on the bed. I grabbed them, pulled them out onto the fire escape. Right away, I just, I knew I had to get the bucket up. You know, that's, that, that was first, I had to get you know, the jack's down, I just had to get in that bucket and go. Joe Dunn, the chauffeur, had already put in the bucket up. He was bringing the bucket right to that window. Uh, he grabbed the people, put them in the bucket. I'm 14, over to the 4 -0. I got 3 10 45 I'm EMS 7. I'm coming down in the bucket. Uh, so the bucket was full. I brought down a lot of people. That bucket was full constantly, and the surrounding units you know, as soon as I, they were, they were waiting for me on, on the ground. Every time I brought them down, they were guys, you know, hands out, grabbing bodies left and right. It was absolutely incredible. We knew we had to put that fire out, you know? It wasn't, it, there was no other option than to push our way up those stairs. So uh, I made it back up to the fourth floor. There was a ladder that they placed there at the hole and uh, just finished knocking down the fire uh, in the apartment and up all the way to the bulkhead. Crossed the hallway to another bedroom, opened the door, and there was a set of infants lying on the floor. And their mom leaning against the bed, passed out. Uh, so I grabbed the two babies, brought them through the hallway into the apartment window with the fire escape, put the babies on the fire escape to another fireman who was out there. Went back in, grabbed the mom, so he yelled to me to, you know, come get them, get them in the bucket and get them out of safety. That's the first thing I did. I felt like after the fire, uh, I thought, you know, usually, you know, there's something that you always could have done better. I mean, I guess, uh, but I really think everybody did such a great job with what we had. This is what they train you for, and it's, it's, 
to be a part of that team, to just be you know a part of this team is just, I, I can't even describe it. Being an Owlsman, receiving a, a medal, makes me feel good that, you know, I'm a professional fireman and I did, you know, everyone did their job that day, and including myself, I guess. So. Uh, it's a great feeling, definitely is. Uh, you go your whole career, sometimes this could never happen to you. Uh, for me, uh, to get recognized is incredible. Uh, I've been getting phone calls from people, and it's just amazing how much recognition 114, 201, and myself are getting. And uh, it, it's just great to be recognized uh, for a job well done by, by everybody, everybody involved. On the morning of March 13th, I was assigned as the command chief. In this capacity, the command chief just goes to complex operations. We're mandated on third alarms. On uh, that morning, I heard the fire come in in Sunset Park. I was listening to the department radio and I realized that Deputy Chief Richie Howe had a very challenging assignment. We turned out of headquarters and got in quicker than we normally would get into a third alarm. As we came in, uh, Mayday was being transmitted and was quickly handled by the units there and that was for firefighter Sean O'Mallon from Engine 201. He had uh, collapsed through the floor and the members were able to get him up to the collapse and amazingly he went on and took the nozzle and put out the rest of the fire. But what will always stick in my mind as I walked up and was approaching Richie Howe, I saw a towel out of 114's bucket coming down. In it was firefighter Joe Dunn with a victim. I looked across at, tower, at uh, ladder 109. They were pulling victims down the area ladder. In addition to that, there were portable ladders up to the fire escapes. And no matter where you looked on the building, firefighters from all the companies assigned were removing people from the building. Uh, Richie Howe was facing putting the fire out and handling numerous Signal 1045s for fire victims. Um, we got together and it was a quick transition of command and we decided that Richie would handle the fire and I would handle the 1045s and then all the other support functions Richie needed to uh, get the fire out. Uh, as I went in, I was amazed by how well both the EMS branch and the fire branch, everybody was working together. They took a very bad situation and they did a great job. On this day in Sunset Park, this was truly a heroic operation by many companies. We're recognizing four individuals and two companies here with medals, but it was the work of everybody that was there, not just those four or 14 individuals, but 80, 90, 120 individuals that all did their job, and the result was 37 people all lived from that operation.